So Tony Evans said that you had a big head. I didn't say that. Okay. Um, so I wanted to just share with you a little bit. Uh, you know, he talked about this idea of crisis. And um, I want to share a little bit of, of what, you know, something that Chris and I went through years ago. And I, I know that I, I've shared with you before um, about my son, Josh. Uh, Josh was born uh, premature, about 28, 29 weeks. And, um, and, and I'll never forget, you know, uh, my wife, Crystal, had, um, her brother had uh, wanted to get together with her, and, and, uh, and they were going to meet up in Hagerstown, Maryland. And so, uh, and so Crystal wanted to make one final trip up to see uh, her brother, and uh, of course she was, she was, you know, she was kind of in that, that area uh, as far as with the pregnancy where her doctor was saying you might not want to take any long trips, you know. But we thought, you know, it's, it's Hagerstown, it's just a couple hours away, it wasn't that big of a deal, so... Um, and so I got the call uh, where, you know, Crystal was taken to uh, Washington County Hospital uh, up there in the Hagerstown area. And, you know, I was, you know, I, I didn't know what to do. I, was, I had stayed behind because I think we were doing a, having a youth lock-in or something like that with the church. So, and uh, so I just knew I needed to get there as quick as possible and, you know, we usually keep our luggage, you know, in the attic. And I was like, I don't have time for that. I grabbed two Walmart bags. <laughs> and I, I threw a change of clothes in one Walmart bag and some toiletries in another, threw them in my car and just started heading up the road to Hagerstown, Maryland. So um, when, uh, when I got there, uh, they, they told me what they told Crystal, which, you know, they, they had her on medication to, to uh, stop her contractions. And they said that they felt pretty confident that they were going to be able to do that. And so, you know, I kind of breathed a sigh of relief, and, and I thought, well, that was good. And uh, Crystal's parents were going to bring Lauren, uh, you know, up. And, of course, Lauren was only, you know, two years old, you know, at that time. So... And so, um, you know, I stayed with Crystal that night, and uh, nothing was changing. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, her, her contractions were getting shorter. And, and so that morning they came and they said, you know, we're not sure if we're going to be able to get this thing stopped. And I'm thinking, what do you mean you're not sure? You know, you were so sure, you know, yesterday, you know, you said, we feel really confident. And... And now you're saying you're not sure, and they said that they did not have the right level of a NICU to take a baby that small. And so they were going to have to uh, transport Crystal to Johns Hopkins uh, in Baltimore. And so, um, and so we were still hoping that, you know, they would be able to get everything stopped and in the meantime, you know, Crystal's parents got there uh, with Lauren. And, um, and then finally, you know, the doctor came in. He said, you know, we, we can't get the contraction stopped. It, we've, we've, we've got a transport team that is coming, and they're going to take Crystal uh, to Johns Hopkins. And I think I'd shared with you before, I, I did everything in my power to try to get her transported down to Fredericksburg, you know, and uh, because I thought, you know, her doctor is there. Uh, Crystal worked for Mary Washington Hospital, you know, uh, human resources. So certainly, you know, all the nurses would know they better treat her right, you know, because <laughs> she works for human resources. Now, but, um, but, you know, I did everything in my power to try to get her down to Mary Washington. And they, they said, we're sorry, we're filled up right now. We just can't take her. And I, I even try to get in touch with her doctor to say, can you pull some strings and get Crystal to Fredericksburg? And they said, we, we absolutely can't do it. We're, we, we're, we're just, we're full, you know. And um, I laugh about it now because, you know, I'm 
you know, I came to the place one day where I said, you big dummy, you, try to, you were trying to get your wife diverted from one of the best hospitals, <laughs> in, not just in the country, but in the world, you know. Um, and then later we understood why she had to go there because um, just a couple of weeks after Joshua was born, Joshua had a malrotated bowel, um, and he had to go into, I mean, he's only as big as my hand, and he was having to go into major surgery, you know, to have that corrected. And so, it, you know, looking at it now, it's like, what if, what if she would have been diverted to our hometown hospital until, instead of Johns Hopkins, you know? So, um, so we, 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 uh, said, okay, you know, you're going to have to go to Johns Hopkins and, and um, you know, the transport team's coming. We're going to have a talk with Lauren. And, uh, you know, they got there. They said, you know, Mr. Polston, we're just going to take our time. You just follow right behind us, you know, and, you know, we'll, we'll get there. And it probably will take about, you know, 45 minutes. When they got there and they, they were, you know, getting crystal prepped to, to go, her water broke. And at that point, they looked at me and they said, basically, keep up if you can, because we, we've got to go right now. And so, you know, Crystal's trying to, you know, she's saying, you know, please help Lauren, you know, to understand. There, she's seeing Mommy put on this gurney with all these straps, you know, put, put around her. They, she doesn't know what's going on. So I'm trying to console Lauren, and, um, you know, and, and yet I've got to get on the road and get, you know, going, um, and I'll never forget, you know, they were probably about 15 minutes in front of me, and um, I remember driving on the road to Baltimore, and I remember just breaking down in the car, because, and we'll, we'll talk about this next week, but God absolutely will allow you to get into situations in your life where you absolutely can do nothing. Mm -hmm. You cannot do a thing. And, you know, it's kind of like, it's like a Swiss Army knife, you know, when you're going through a problem, you say, okay, well, I can do this. Okay, that's not going to work, but I can try this. Well, that might not work, but I can do it. And you've got five things that you can try. And, and God will absolutely let you get to the place where you've got nothing left. You've got nothing you can try. There's nothing you can do. You are completely at the mercy of the situation and whatever God is going to do to, to, to rectify that situation. And so I just broke down in the car, and I just, I just was in tears on the way to Baltimore. And I said, God, I, I can't do anything. There's not one thing I can do. There's, there's nothing that Crystal can do. God, you, you've got to take this. You've got to handle this. Because, you know, our, our child's going to die. You know, we were so scared he was going to be born, you know, too early and that he wasn't going to make it. And so got to the hospital and went in. And uh, they had gotten Crystal into a room, you know, got her hooked up to every, everything, you know, the monitors and all. And, um, and so, you know, they, they came in, they kind of told us what was going to happen, um, you know, when it was time for the, the baby to be born. And so, um, and so I was just, you know, there with Crystal, and, and then there, there came a point where Crystal said, I just feel a lot of pressure. And she asked the nurse, she said, you know, can you check? She said, I'm just feeling a lot of pressure. And the nurse said, well, I'll check, but I don't, I don't, you know, you've got a while before anything's going to happen, you know. And so the nurse, the, the nurse checked, and there's this, there's this big blue button on the wall. And the nurse checked, and she, her eyes got big as saucers, and she went over and she went, bam, and she hit that button. And when she hit that button, you know, all I can tell you is it was like, it was like, I, I say it was like watching the hand of God. Because when she hit that button and the doors open up to that room, I bet you there were 20 different people that came into that room, doctors and nurses. 
And all of them had a job to do. All of them knew exactly why they were there and what they were doing. And all I could do is just stand back and watch what was happening. And I was just in awe of everything that was taking place. And um, Crystal gave birth to Josh, and, and they asked me if I wanted to cut the cord. And I said, yeah, I, I'll do it. I said, but I, I, I know you've got to get him out of here. And, and so I, I cut the cord you know, really fast. They got him out of there, got him into an isolate, um, and got him over to the NICU. And... and um, you know, we, we ended up living in Baltimore for a month. You know, we stayed at a place called the Children's House. Um, it's like a Ronald McDonald house type of thing, but we could stay there for $15 a night. You know, so that was a blessing. You know, and, um, and you know, and it was a nice, it was, it was a nice place. And they told us just be careful, you know, when you're going out at nighttime, because I don't know if you've been to Johns Hopkins before, but yeah, you about two blocks in any direction, you know, you're, it's, it's a rough area, you know. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, we lived there for the next month. And, I mean, that, you know, then went through Joshua's surgery. And then Crystal had to have an emergency DNC, you know, while we were there um, because she started to hemorrhage. And, I mean, it was just you know, all of this stuff that was going on that we had no, no power over. We had no control whatsoever I mean there were times where if you you've, you've if you've been around a NICU before and you've seen like where the babies have they, they call them Brady's or bradycardias um, but it's when when they stop breathing and there were times where Joshua would be in his isolate and um, you know he would have a bradycardia and and he would stop breathing and the nurse would go over there and they, you know, they would reach in and they just kind of pat him on his diaper or something and they just thump him on his heel or something like that. And usually that would get him breathing again. And then there was times where it, he wouldn't. And they'd have to, to take the top off of that isolate and literally pick him up and, you know, do other things to get, to get him to breathe again. And it, it, was, it would just scare you to death as a parent, you know. Um, and so, um, but, you know, he, 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 he made it, you know, he was there for a month. Um, and then they, they uh, sent him down to, to Mary Washington. They transported him uh, down there. And, um, you know, and we just look back on it now, and it was just this incredible um, experience where God grew our faith. And I, I don't know, he just did it in such a, a, a very personal way that we knew that it was him, you know. And, um, and, and so I'm, I'm just sharing that story with you tonight, and, and, and I'm sure that we can go around, and I'm sure that, you know, maybe there's some similar uh, types of stories and things that that you've been through in your life but there's just times as a child of God where God you know it, and and that's the thing about it you know you we we come to church and we we pray for God to help us and we have faith that God is going to help us. And we're going to talk about that. That you know, Jesus talked about that a lot, you know, when he when he came to someone who was sick and he would say, Your faith has made you whole, your faith has made you whole. You know, and we're going to talk about this next week, just this whole idea of faith and where does where does faith come in on this whole thing? But but we see in the Bible on one side, we're supposed to have faith. We're supposed to believe that God can do things and that He will do things, okay? But, but God will absolutely let you go through some difficult things in your life 
that you have no power over whatsoever. And, and, and that's hard. You know, that's hard. That, that because you just want God to just, just jot, God, why don't, can you just snap your fingers and just, can you just fix it, please? Can you just fix it? You know? My son and I, we were talking one night, and he's got, um, he's got friends that are, when he, when he was, and this was in the Christian school, but he had some friends and, you know, just a couple of them wondered where they were spiritually, mm-hmm. you know, and, um, and, and we would talk about, Dad, why does, why does, Dad, why does God let people go to hell? Wouldn't it be better if, if they were going to go to hell? Doesn't God know that they, they that they're not gonna if they're not gonna trust Him, you know? Then why why create them then if they're just going to go to? Yeah, I'm like man, these are pretty good questions, you know. Um. And that, and and that's the thing, you know. It's it's. We we want God to just you know that and that was kind of His thing. Why can't God just make them, you know, get saved? Can't God just and it's like, no, you know, God gave us a free will. And they have a right to exercise that free will, and you can't have true love without free will. And, and you know, that all sounds really great theologically, but when you start talking about real people, living real lives with real souls that are going to spend eternity somewhere, that's when it gets real. You know, that's when it, that's when it means something. And so I just, you know, we're going to talk about that, you know. um, But I I just, I just want us to be thinking about that, you know, because I think sometimes when we talk about our Christian faith, we talk about it like it's some kind of a Pollyanna type of thing where everything is sunshine and unicorns and rainbows and everything's going to go great and nothing's ever going to be bad and. And, and, and if something is bad, then God's going to fix it, and it's going to be, you know. Well, he might fix it, but like was said earlier, we might not like how he fixes it, you know. Or God might work in somebody's life, but maybe by the time they do get saved, we have to go through some heartbreak. We have to go through some, some tough times before... This person we love gets saved, or before you know they turn back to the Lord, or whatever. And in the meantime, man, we're we're dying inside, you know. So that's all. I, you know, this is this is where the rubber meets the road as far as our faith goes, and we're going to talk about it uh, some more next week. So um, I think it's about that time. Uh, what up? Oh, Seven oh one. Okay, so we need to. Uh, I don't want anybody getting on me here. So. But uh, let's go ahead and pray, and then, um, and then if, if we need to fellowship, we can go out in the foyer, but um, let, the, let the choir get started. So let's uh, go ahead and pray. And um, Gary, will you close us in prayer tonight, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us and for the opportunity to be in your house and to study your word and to learn more about you. Dear Lord, we just pray for our faith and just pray that... Um, through this study and other studies, we will grow stronger in our faith and that we will learn to rely on you, dear Lord, for all that we need. And dear Lord, we just pray for safe travels. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen.